What's going on guys? Today we're replacing a very worn out fence with 13 feet of brand new fence with a custom fit gate. Check it out. <laughs> you see the problem here. Uh, what is up fence fam? If you watch this channel for any length of time, then you know what this is. Jeremy's gone out and scoured the YouTube interwebs and found us another fencing related video that he thought that you would like to watch me review. If you like this video, it would mean the world if you gave it a like. It lets YouTube know that we're up to good business. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing so that you get notified each and every time we've got new content available. With all that being said, let's get into it. All right, guys, this video is titled Building a Wood Fence with a Gate by the Strange Garage Channel. <laughs> I like that channel name. As always, for the original video, check the description below. What's going on, guys? Today, we're replacing a very worn-out fence with 13 feet of... He's off to a good start using a top-line jig. Now, the one thing I don't like is that it's uh, made out of wood, so it's a natural material. And if you are going to use a, a piece of wood, it looks like this is a 2x4 or 2x6, you'd want to run it cross-grain. The problem here is it already looks like this 2x4 is a little bit bowed as it is. By using... Typically, we would use like an aluminum jig. You know, Mr. Fence Tools has a top line jig exactly for this uh, purpose called the straightaway. I like the idea that he's using a top line jig, but I'd prefer that if he's going to use wood, he uses it cross grain just to try to prevent the uh, bow from affecting the fence. Ultimately, you'd want to use a metal one. Brand new fence and a custom fit gate. Check it out. So you, <laughs> you see the problem here. Uh, one is that that final picket on the gate doesn't match that fence line at all. And the top of the pickets are, they're not all even with each other. Um, it, I don't know, using an, using a, a metal top line jig would be preferred. Now he also has his gate hinges mounted to his house. Not a massive fan of this idea. Um, we've talked before on the channel about, you know, hooking the, your end of your fence, your terminal of your fence to the house. And the idea being the fence is going to move at a different rate that your house does. So through the year, depending on where you live in the country, I'm sure, but here in the Midwest where we have frost lines, the, the house will move. Now we're talking about millimeters at a time, but as the ground freezes and thaws, your house will move. Now also your fence moves as well. In the northern you know, climate, you would see that as frost heave. But even here in the Midwest, we see fences move over time, which is why gates need adjusted. Even gates installed with steel posts and steel frames need, a need adjusted from time to time because they move. Now, when you attach the fence to your house and the, the house moves at a different rate that your fence moves, it could lead to damage to your house or to the fence, one pulling away from the other. Now, since this is a gate... You can get away from that a little bit. It's it, There's a obviously an air gap between the house and the fence, so one wouldn't really rip the other out, per se, as they move. Uh, but it's putting a lot of weight on that house, especially on the siding, uh, that wasn't really designed to hold a load. I'd prefer to see a standalone post used for that gate post so it's independent from the house as a whole. So we have here an 8-foot post that's down inside of a 2-foot hole, so we have 6 feet coming out. So not not to ASTM standards. ASTM would ask for a 30-inch hole, 8-inch in diameter. Um, I like that it looks like he's using a 4x6 pressure treated. Um, so instead of a 4x4, four four, giving him a little bit extra mass there. And I didn't end up filming that because I figured you guys didn't want to see a whole bunch of cursing. I know YouTube isn't a big fan of that. And usually the basic tools you're going to need, a set of post hole diggers and a shovel, and a roto hammer attached to a cherry picker, um, which uh, most of the time you're not going to need that. But in this particular case, I'm really glad that I had it for obvious reasons what we're going to end up doing is i don't know that i've ever seen a hammer drill attached to a cherry picker before i mean i guess they could be they, they can get heavy i suppose so it would make it easier and it looks like you actually would drill into the rock and just pull it out with the cherry picker not a bad idea dry set concrete if you hate dry set you can do a wet set but that's not what i prefer to do and it's just a little bit easier for time's sake to do dry set so let's get on to it Doing dry set concrete is actually really simple. You just got to pour a little bit of dry concrete directly into the hole, get your post approximately level and where you want it to be, and then pour the rest of the concrete into it. And then after everything is all said and done, you got the whole fence built, do a final level, and then pour water on top of it. Make sure you pour plenty of water on there to set. 
you would typically want to be plumbing the post as you're pouring it in. I mean, you can always adjust it afterwards. That's one of the benefits of dry packing. But just to get started off on the right foot, you'd want to be plumbing that as as you're pouring the concrete, or at least check it periodically as you're pouring it in. Saturate it, and you'll be good to go. So for attaching the fence clips, you want to use slightly longer screws. These are three inches. And the reason I'm using the three inches is because you want them to suck into the wood all the way so they're flush up against this surface. Otherwise, it's going to make it more difficult for you to set the two by fours down into it. So you just want to make sure. I've never really understood using joist hangers. It looks like that's what he's using. Instead of just attaching the rail to the fence itself, I, I think introducing a piece of hardware just kind of introduces another point of failure. I don't know of of professionally built fences that include joist hangers or hardware or the or such, but you do see that a lot in the DIYs. I'm not sure. I guess it comes. There's a thought that it's more of a sturdy installation method. Maybe I don't know. You're really just trying to make the next step in the process that much easier. You would also want to measure if you're using these joist hangers, well, regardless of how you're placing your two before you'd want to measure from grade when you're setting the height. Um, it looks like he's maybe eyeballing this in or just setting a height at random. So we typically would do uh, six inches up, up from ground level and then six inches below the top line for a six inch reveal and then set your middle two before at the midpoint between the two. You wouldn't really want to just place them randomly. Perfect. Hi, Lilia. So those are good and flush, and we'll be able to put two by fours right into them. No problem. Installing your rails is the easy part. As soon as you have your fence clips in, all you gotta do is set one side of the two by four into the fence clip, and along the other side, just do a scribe line. And as long as you cut along that scribe line, it should fit directly in between the two clips, no problem. I like the idea that he's using a string line. So he's giving himself a really good idea where the top line of the pickets are going to be. So maybe he did measure and he just didn't show it in the video, you know, the placement of what he's calling fence hangers. I think they're joist hangers or yeah, I think he called them fence clips or something, but I'm, I'm hoping that he measured it. So the, the fact that there's a string line there gives me hope that uh, he actually used measurements when he was placing those. Then all you have to do is take a couple of screws, cinch them into there. Make sure you don't put the screws on the side that you're gonna be putting fence boards on, but just make sure to hold it into that clip nice and good. For me, the quickest way that I've found for installing fence boards nice and straight is I just take a two by four that's longer than the rails. See, it really, and this could just be an optical illusion, but it really looks like there's a bow in that two by four, which would then give the top line of your fence a matching bow. And I put it directly on top of the two posts. And then I just butt my fence boards directly to the bottom of that board. And that means they're all gonna be along that same line. Should work out no problem. For a lot of people, I think one of the more intimidating parts to building a fence is the gate. And that's not really necessary. There's not all that much that goes into building a gate. There's there's quite a lot that goes into building a gate, a, a proper gate that will work for years to come gates are the number one callback on fences and it's not even close you know according to surveys done of households in the united states so if you're watching this outside the united states it might not be the case but number one callback number, number one pain point of fence installations is always the gates they sag they drag they warp they twist they just generally don't work right uh, there's there's companies that their entire business model revolves around repairing or replacing gates I mean, it's, that's how big of a problem it is. This gate's already off to a rough start. Um, looks like he's, again, using some sort of steel brackets. There's not, well, let's wait and see what the bracing looks like. It's not complicated at all, really. It all just boils down to a few different 2 by 4s and a means of putting them together. In this case, I use galvanized steel, just little flashings that you're able to get at Home Depot or any hardware store. And I put it together with screws, but the only thing that's really important, there's a couple things. First is you want to make sure that your rails are all the same length, so you're basically making a box. So the top two rails got to be the same length, and the two upright rails have to be the same length. And that's absolutely critical for enabling the next step. That stands to reason. I mean, that way, I guess you, by default, you have a square, a square gate, 
you're really relying on these brackets and screws to hold this thing together as that wood over time wants to warp and twist. And gravity is obviously pulling down on it. I mean, there's no, there's no, the joints here just all just budding one, two or four up to the other. It, it's a rough start. As long as the two surfaces that the gate is going between are plumb, then you definitely want this to be square. Otherwise, it's not going to fit inside the opening. And the way that you verify that, you see me all the time when I'm making stuff measuring diagonally, and what I'm doing is I'm measuring for squareness. So you can see here 88.29 one way, and when you measure the other way, we get the same measurement. And that means it's square. So if you measure that way and you're not getting the same measurement, that means whatever you're making is out of square as long as your wood is cut to the same dimensions. The way I built mine is I kind of just roughed everything together and I actually got it fairly close to square but not exact and then I put these galvanized plates in and then I measured it again and as soon as I got it where I wanted it, I toe screwed in so I put some longer three inch deck screws in and that's what's holding everything together. That's really where your power is. And then this crossbar is also pretty important. And really all you have to do is as soon as you get the rough opening built, you just set a two by four behind it and then you're able to scribe the line and cut along it. It's gonna make everything a lot simpler to do as little measurement as possible with the exception of the square. You really want that to be as perfect as possible. So what the brace is doing is it's transferring weight or pressure from the outside top corner of that gate down to the inside bottom corner. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to counteract gravity by taking that pressure and pushing it down to that bottom, somewhere around that bottom hinge. The problem here is just the way, there's not a lot of support here. Like in theory, this looks like a good concept, but if you think about it, there's not the weight transfer isn't going to transfer itself down that two before. Now, the pressure on that top two before, the two by six, it looks like, would probably transfer through the two before down to the hinge. The problem is that outside two by six, there's a, or two by four, it looks like he's using on the outsides. Uh, it's really being just held on to that compression brace with a few screws, with three screws, it looks like. Same thing with the bottom two by six, there's not a lot. It's being held up by, again, three screws to that two by four. I would have to guess, you know, I don't know if there's a follow-up on this. Looks like he did this video a couple years ago, a few years ago. So it'd be interesting to see uh, where that where that gate is now. You know, I would, I would almost bet that it started dragging probably after a few months, um, certainly after a year, and it would require a little bit more attention doesn't mean this won't work. I mean, in theory, it will it will swing for a while, but it, it's going to have problems long term. It's just not braced correctly, not assembled correctly at all. But any complicated cuts, scribes are going to save you a lot of trouble. They're going to make your life a lot better. When it comes to building a gate, one of the things that's going to simplify the process a little bit for you is picking out a good hardware set that's going to have your hinges and your clasp that holds the gate shut. So picking out one that fits your needs is very important. The hard part on this build was I actually had to install a few fence boards directly onto the gate before I could even hang the hinges. So I had to guesstimate where I needed the fence boards to be in terms of height. It took a little bit of work, but I was able to get it right. And then I got the gate hung and it was time to start laying out the fence boards. And you can see I did the same trick, just put a board across the top and then butt all of the fence boards up against that. The problem is you see that, you see that picket moving as he slides it. Like I said, the end result is that top is nowhere in line with the fence. It's falling a completely different angle. And it looks like the pickets really aren't in line with each other either. It's not perfect, but it ended up all right. The final process is attaching the gate hardware and then double checking that everything works all right. For a DIY project, I mean, obviously it accomplished um, the goal, which is probably either to keep kids or pets in or out or provide a little bit of privacy. It does that, you know, with a little bit more attention to detail, the finishes could have been a little bit nicer. Um, and like I said, the, the gate ultimately uh, would end up lasting longer, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about the fence in the comments below. Until next time, Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.